Hello and welcome to Coding for Kids. In this tutorial, we're going to look at for loops. Let's get started. Okay, so I've opened my shell and I've opened a new file so I can write some code. I've copied in a couple of examples that I wrote earlier so I can show you what a for loop is. Basically, a for loop is a way of iterating over something for a set period of time. A good way of understanding this is looking at a few examples. In this first example, we have for i in range 11, print i. So, what this is going to do is, for every time there's an i in 11, it's going to print that i. i does not mean anything, that is a variable name. We can change this to n, or n, and it will still work. The syntax for a for loop is like an if statement. You have a colon on the end which produces an indentation for your next line of what you want to happen in the loop. So let's have a look at what this one might do. So if we run this, save and then run, it's going to print 0 to 10. And so that just means that for every time there's something in 11, it's going to print up to that 11. A little trick you find is that the number that you enter is the end point. So when you write 11, it prints to 10. If I wanted to write to 11, I'm going to have to write 12. And this starts at zero. So this is one of the most basic types of for loops there are. Let's look at the next type. This next type of for loop is a little bit more complicated. It's the exact same, except we've got an extra term in the brackets stating what our range is. We only use the term range when we're dealing with numbers. What do you think this could mean? Let's run it and find out. It's printed from 5 to 10. As we learned in the first one, the maximum is always one outside of, so it means 11 gets turned into 10. But this value here, this value comma and then the maximum, is the minimum. And so this minimum here is included in the data. So this is going to print 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Let's look at another one. Okay, so in this type of for loop, it is the same, we're dealing with numbers, but we've got some new numbers in here, there's three terms now. So, we've got our minimum here, which is 5, our maximum, which is 31, and our another number, which is 5. What do you think that could be? So, the third term in the brackets is how much we want to go up by. So, this is going to go start at 5 and go up by 5s until it hits the maximum, which because it's 31, is 30. Let's run it and see. So we can see here it's counted in fives from 5 to 30. Let's see what happens if we change this to 30 instead of 31. Save and run. It's going to be a maximum of 25 because 5 doesn't go into 29. Let's look at the next type of for loop. Okay, so this type of for loop incorporates part of an if statement. And we learned how to write an if statement in a previous tutorial. We've got a similar thing up the top here to the second one we looked at. We've got a minimum of 1, so it's not going to start at 0, it's going to start at 1. It's going to go all the way up to 10, and it's going to print them. But, as you see in an if statement, we can add an else here, and it's the same syntax as an if statement. We write else, and then the, the colon, and then we have an indentation at the bottom. And this is going to print, I am finished. We learned how to write a print statement in the second tutorial. This is basically going to run through the range as it did in the first one, but as soon as it runs out of numbers, as soon as it can't go past 10, it's going to print, I am finished. So let's run this and see. As you can see here, it's printed 1 to 10, it's counted from 1 to 10, and then it's gone, I am finished, because that's when the loop runs out. Let's look at the next type of for loop. So this last type of for loop doesn't use range anymore. We only use range for numbers. Here, it's the same at the start, 4n in or 4i in. Doesn't matter what letter you use. Now we have a word, geography. It's a long word. We're going to print n. So have a think about what this might do. Just quickly, when you have a word here, it's always got to be in inverted commas, but you don't need brackets. And this is the same syntax as all the other for loops we've looked at. Right, let's find out what it's going to do. It's printed each letter, so every time that this iterates over the word, it's going to print a new letter. 
And that is very similar to everything we've looked at with the numbers. You have just learnt the most common types of for loops used in Python. Thank you for watching this Coding for Kids tutorial and learning how to write a for loop. We hope to see you in the next one.